Welcome, everybody, to episode 27 of the Regression to the Mean podcast. I am your host, Sean Moran. And wow, dude, look, I, I'm in some exotic library. Where where am I, Keegan? What, what's yeah, going on? It looks great. Here? Where what am I what at? library are you at? <laughs> I'm just, this is my house. I, I live in a museum. That's these, crazy. It's crazy lighting. Now, if you are tuning in for the first time ever for video, for a video podcast on YouTube, welcome. This is the first time we're ever recording what what we look like. We're we're in, we're doxing ourselves. This is what we look like to the world, putting um, ourselves out there. Finally, this is a big moment for the podcast. Keegan has bought a microphone, uh, which is pretty cool. Look at Checking. that. Check 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 check. Keegan has a microphone. I have a green screen, so we can record video and you won't have to look at my disgusting background because I'm living in my girlfriend's room that she grew up in in the moment right now. <laughs> and Keegan has those beautiful backgrounds. So oh, show off the, much to the it right wonderful now. background of the world. He, 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 Keegan's got a pretty dope setup. He's got records. He's got a skull. Keegan's very trendy and cool. Very <laughs> L.A. Um, I'm very uptight in Orange County. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, so it, it makes sense. It's very fitting. No, you're at the um, Smithsonian, Sean. I, I am. I, I got comic books, all types of books. I'm really into this kind of lighting. It, it makes me tinker really well underneath this lighting. I make yeah. some of the worst roster decisions <laughs> underneath this kind of like lighting. It's very aesthetic. So it, uh, it's, it's very ideal for fantasy purposes. Keegan, how are we doing, man? It is Thursday, Friday, Junior. I know you're probably feeling pretty good. You started some people tonight in Thursday night football. I did. I did. I got yeah. a little frisky. Yeah. yeah. Thursday night starts all across the board. Had some dig starts. Had an Isaiah McKenzie start. Had to sweat out a Singletary start. You know, I think I went three for four in my leagues and Thursday night football starts. Oh, yeah. Four for four because I started Ramondre. So. Ramondre's night looked pretty bleak until that garbage time uh, drive where he caught like four passes. That was yeah. pretty cool. That was tough, that was pretty but he cool. saved the day with that. He did. I thought maybe he'd get up to like 15 points, and I'd feel pretty good about it. But, you know, hey, they were never in that game. Not I live with 13, 14 fantasy points for Mondre. I was very much on the fence in a league that I need to win in. I'm number one in points scored, but I'm in eighth place right now. I cannot lose. I wanted to start Gabe Davis over Jamal Williams. I decided to bench Gabe Davis for Jamal Williams. I feel okay with that right now. I feel okay with that. So you feel good so far. I feel I feel pretty good about it. You know what else I feel really good about, Keegan? What, Sean? Week 13, dude. It's going to be a great week. What a week. I said of our Thursday uh, Thanksgiving bonanza, the football hasn't been that great. Matchups have kind of stunk. These games are so high quality. On there is a ton I of, mean, on paper, it looks incredible. The narratives galore, and it's revenge week, dude. It's tons of players playing against their former teams, and I love that narrative, right? And I think the two ones that stand out that are super pressing for fantasy is you have A.J. Brown versus the Tennessee Titans, which I think is textbook revenge. They didn't want to pay him. They traded him to another team. He's now doing well. They're still doing well. But this is A.J. Brown's opportunity to say, hey, you chose to draft Traylon Burks and not pay me, A.J. Brown, an alpha wide receiver. And I think the Eagles are going to be highly motivated to get A.J. be the rock. Are you excited about that one? I know there are a couple other ones you're excited about. I, uh, yeah, I love that. Let's hope his eye is feeling better and his stomach is feeling a little bit better and he laid <laughs> off the Goodness. Chipotle this week. Please but no, that should be a great Chipotle. game for A.J. Brown, honestly. there's, I mean, there's tons. Like you said, there's tons of revenge game matchups. Um, I'm, I'm super excited of uh, Conklin going back against Minnesota <laughs> this week, of course. Yes, that's the one we're all thinking about. We weren't <laughs> thinking about any other revenge matchup. It was Tyler Conklin versus the Jets. But, I mean, look. Eagles versus Titans is a great game. Two teams that are both in first place in their divisions. Another revenge game that's awesome is, is Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson, former 49er running backs, and Mike McDaniel playing the San Francisco 49ers. Those that's are awesome. two teams good, that are playing good story really good there. football. That That's the game of the week, in my opinion. How it's not the Sunday night game is just Jerry Jones. Um, you know, Jerry Jones refused... Do? 
he refused to have his high school segregated and he refused to give up that Sunday night slot. Oh, Uh-oh. Man. Ouch. We are going there. We are oh, going man. there. It was just too big of a lay- low hanging fruit here. Um, that game is fantastic. Niners Dolphins. Y- you even mentioned Jets, Vikings, kind of cheeky, right? That's a good game. It That's is a, a good really game. good game. You've got the best quarterback in the NFL, Mike White, going up against Kirko Banks and Justin Jefferson. You've got Sauce Gardner against and, Justin Jefferson. Yep. Him That's and DJ incredible. Reed going up against JJ. That should be an awesome matchup. That's really exciting. I'm curious to know if Sauce can lock out JJ. That's like my... I don't know. Yeah, JJ's kind of matchup proof, but Sauce has been excellent this year, so we'll see. That's alpha versus alpha because you can make an argument that Sauce Gardner's start to his career has been on par with Justin Jefferson's like rookie season. Like it's a DB. Like it, it's yeah, been that it's special of a season for Sauce. Um, then you have one that's been been tough. We don't really want to pick it up too much, uh, but it's Deshaun Watson and his return to the Houston Texans. Yep. Um, obviously, there's a lot of non football stuff here. Yeah, I I don't. <laughs> I'd make no money talking about fantasy, so I'm definitely not going to pick this up on a morality standpoint here. We are not. Deshaun Watson is not a friend of the podcast, so to speak. Um, But it's hard to ignore kind of the storyline of him returning to his former team that he played for, played well for, was a fantasy superstar for, like looked like he was going to be the future franchise quarterback, asks out, then the whole situation where he's suspended and he's a sexual predator, you know. That happens, and now he's a <laughs> Cleveland Browns on a fully guaranteed contract, and this is his first start on a four and seven team. Really weird. I don't really know where this game could go. I could see this being weird, a route. Weird, I could weird. see them losing. I don't know. This kind of feels like the Texans Super Bowl. What? What's you had some good this, thoughts on this? What? What are you? What are you thinking? It is the Texans Super Bowl. I mean, they are going to do everything in their power to make sure that Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns do not win this game. And I'm not going to be surprised if the Browns don't win this game. I mean, when's the, how many days has it been, Sean, since Sean Watson has played an NFL football game? When I last looked it up, it was 696, which is so not chill to say 696. We're going to say over 700, over 700 for Deshaun. 700 days since he's last played an NFL game. Like People are assuming that he's just going to come in here and route the Texans and be a perfect quarterback, and I just don't see it happening. They might win, sure. I think on the run game they can win, and we'll talk about that later. But I don't know. This could be like you know how Seattle opened up their season against Russ Wilson. I already was like still pretty high on the Russ trade, and Seattle went out there and you know beat the Broncos because that was like their Super Bowl for the season. Like that mattered more than anything to them. I think this matters a lot to the Texans, and they might have looked dull the past couple of weeks, but they're going to have some newfound energy for this matchup. You would think that if this is the game the Texans are going to get up for for the rest of the season, it would be this one. It's got to be this one. If they don't get up for this one, this team is like full-blown, give it up. Yes. Full-blown, full-stop, give it up. Outside of these four revenge games, you go further down the list, you have the commanders at the New York Giants, both seven-win teams, you know, vying for a playoff spot, NFC East Divisional Showdown. I'm sure this will be a nasty affair, but... This is a great division matchup, classic rivalry, and this is just like the fifth game, right? Like, yeah, yeah, this is a, a like an afterthought game, and you have a stout defensive line in the Commanders against, you know, Saquon Barkley and a very banged up Giants offense. It, it could be tough sledding uh, for the, for the Giants this week. I mean, I do. This is insane. We like Jaguars at Lions. Like that's just the ultra fun bowl, right? Like yes. that's the fantasy. That one should be matchup. really, they're, really fun. Yes. Like they're both four win teams, but we're just gonna be glued to that one because we just have Christian Kirk and Trevor Lawrence and Amon Ross St. Brown, Jabal Williams. You, you know, you got all the boys going off in that one. That one should be a shootout. Death taxes and games played at Ford Field in Detroit. We want those mashups, right? So that that's even a really fun one. Like, you know, Bears and Packers, I don't really care, but that's a fun division matchup. Seahawks and Rams is lame, but like that's a fun division matchup. Like Chargers, Raiders, Raiders. yeah, Raiders, Chargers, Chargers that's a fun one. Insane. And then I'm waxing and waning between what the game of the week is, but it's hard to underestimate Kansas City going into Cincinnati. 
Ooh, that one's that gonna one. be a good one. That is Shootout. the return of our sweet prince, Jamar Chase. He's back in the lineup. Oh, I, I, I mean, like he was playing on a broken hip. I, Paul I can't Detmer, believe that. Paul Detmer, the uh, beat writer, was interviewing Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase gave a pretty thorough breakdown of of his injury. He fractured his hip and tore his labrum in his hip against the Falcons, right? Or was it against, no, it was against the Saints. And then mm-hmm. the week afterwards, he doesn't really practice. He barely can walk, but he goes out and plays anyway and scores two touchdowns. And it was on his second touchdown he scores, he re-injured it. He barely could walk and kind of just played the rest of the game. Like, what a freak. Like, what, <laughs> you know, what a freak. There's a play, I put it on the Twitter account, of him ripping off like a 50, 60-yard touchdown, all yak, breaking tackles in the secondary. He's got a broken hip while he's doing it. So we haven't seen Jamar Chase play football in five weeks, dude. And he he's is a freak of nature. I can't wait Kansas to have him back City on the Chiefs. field. And you've got Justin Ross, Ross for the Chiefs just talking shit. He's like this DB. Did you see this? He was getting the names wrong of T. Higgins and Hayden Hurst, like showing zero respect for this this Bengals pass catching group. I Which is know, one man. of the best that's, ones that's in the league. I don't know one. why you're doing there. Yeah, I mean, that one should be a shootout. Yeah. I mean, the last time they played in the regular season, last season, Jamar Chase had over 50 fantasy points. Oof. Two teams who are passing a, a lot right now. This should be a lot of fun. R- really, the only games I don't really want to watch are the Sunday night game. Colts at Cowboys. I'm good. Yeah, um, I'm chill The off Monday that. night game. The Monday night game is interesting. Saints, Bucks. I, I don't. It's good on paper, but I don't know. That could have just been a 10 a.m. game for me. I don't. Good on paper, like but, maybe like four years ago, and maybe I don't know. Drew Brees versus Brady yeah. two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Like oh, I'm not excited for that one at all. Oh, I'm not loving not the Falcons all. versus Pittsburgh matchup, to be honest, but. Well, that. that's it. Ravens is the game I just don't need to watch. Like, I don't know. Like, like, yeah, game cast on uh, ESPN app. That's all good. I, that's all I'm, I need. I, I am good off that. But th- this is kind of, I think, the best slate of the season. I'm really excited to sit down and watch eight hours of commercial free football with Scott Hansen. I'm, I'm always excited for that, Sean, but I'm a little more excited this week. And come on, dude. If you, I'm a 49er fan. This is a big, big, big weekend for Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel was working underneath Kyle Shanahan for the last 14 years. Like he is Shanahan's little brother, his understudy. Yeah. You know, Shanahan's been kicking his protege's asses. Like that is the goal. I, but McDaniel's kind of a different breed. He he is clearly a good coach. I think one of my favorite clips throughout the week was did you see the video of mcdaniel being like guys am i stupid or i kind of feel like i just want to pass every single time on this draft <laughs> yeah. did you see that video yeah king stay kings baby that's how that's what we love to see we want to see an offense that passes it every single time we shout out mike mcdaniel but that's going to be a fun one i mean fantasy purposes galore i just think it's going to be a high scoring weekend i'm excited to tune in if this is your first time listening to our Thursday episode, typically Keegan and I go through our favorite matchups to start sit. We're having fun doing that, but at the same time, I think it's just more fun for us to give it a kind of a, you know, a preview. More of an so overall preview. Yeah, you know? like here's what we're expecting. Here's guys that excite us this week. Here are guys that are making us a little nervous. Again, it's just regurgitated start sit. We invented that concept five weeks ago. Um, no one was ever doing it. No one on yeah, Fantasy correct. Podcast ever suggested, hey, this is someone you should start. And then I'm also going to suggest someone I'm going to sit. No one had ever done it. It's we're been five years in the Keegan, space, Sean. I know. We're, we're pioneers in the space. It's been five weeks, and Keegan was like, hey, I think this is getting stale already. You know, I, I don't think this is something that could last for 10, 20 years. You know, I just don't think it's any of staying power. So we're gonna we're gonna pivot to something a little bit different. Um, but I'm gonna give it to you, Keegan. Tell us about somebody you're really excited to play this week. Somebody I'm really excited to play this week, Sean, is Jamal Williams. I have been obviously rostering Jamal Williams all year in two leagues this year, um, and he is 
people are gonna like i've seen comments like he's this year's damian harris but like he's a little bit better than that i mean damian harris was like you know 15 touchdowns last year but jamal williams already has what 12 touchdowns 13 total touchdowns on the year he's obviously got this very clear early down rush roll like first and second down swift and him like are almost even in playing time like in the two minute drill towards the end of the game like jamal williams is very involved in this offense and I can't wait to watch him stumble into the end zone twice this weekend. I mean, he does it every weekend at this point, averaging a touchdown a week. It's what's not exciting about that. And he has been almost this like unsung hero for me and any other zero RB drafters this year. <laughs> yeah. In fantasy. It's it's awesome. I mean, like you kind of get nervous about it because like it'll be the third quarter and he'll have four points. And by the end of the fourth, he's <laughs> he's got nineteen because he stumbled in the end zone twice. Like if they get to the red zone, the ball's going to him. Leads the league in red zone touches this year. Um, you know, he's averaging like 63 rush yards over the last three weeks. I'm I'm excited about him, you know? This is a, an oh, very whatever Jacksonville rushing defense too. So I'm really, really excited about Jamal this week. I love the Jamal play. Jamal Williams right now running back 12 in PPR. If you are playing with your grandpa and you're a boomer in a standard league, he is running back six. Wild. What a hero. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. And I don't think he's this year's Damian Harris. I think he is this year's James Conner. Damian Harris was not RB12 anyway. <laughs> <last season. laughs> yeah. He, he's he got was, 41 he red zone touches. That's the number. He's got 41 red zone touches this year. I mean, if they get down there, the ball's going to him. There's just no question about it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I, I think that game is just going to be a ton of fun. Going to be a high-scoring affair. If the Lions actually go up big in this game, big opportunity for Jamal Williams. Like, if they go Ooh. up by 10 points and he's he's grinding out the clock, they're going to lean on him and not DeAndre Swift, someone who struggles with falling forward. Like, you know, DeAndre Swift's a spectacular player. Loves to run left and right, though. Yeah, he doesn't go forward. So, <laughs> um, if they have a lead, this could be a very big Jamal Williams game. I am with you. I am playing Williams. I'm prioritizing players in this matchup. So I, th I think it's a great choice. What about you, yeah, Sean? How I are you really excited to watch this weekend? It, you know, when I'm looking at running back, because he started with running back, a guy that I'm really intrigued with to watch is Jalen Warren. So Najee Harris goes down with an abdomen injury. It's not appearing to be severe. So I, I don't think he's going to miss three to four weeks. I don't think he'll go on IR, but I'm skeptical he's going to play this week. Mm -hmm. Jalen Warren had been eating into Najee Harris's snaps over the past month, and he's looked really good, primarily as a pass catcher out of the backfield. But when he'd gotten the rock, he'd looked more explosive, just looked like a more efficient player than Najee. Najee, we didn't see Jalen Warren take advantage of Najee going down because Jalen Warren's hurt himself. So mm -hmm. he actually hurt his hamstring two weeks ago, was inactive last week. He is now fully practicing this week. And Najee Harris's replacement, Benny Snell, last week just got a DMP. He's mm -hmm. got downgraded to DMP. So now Jalen Warren against a Falcons rush defense that sucks, like truly is not good is setting up to be in a position where he can get 80 to 90 percent of the carries as a true bell cow in an offense that's starting to pick up some steam can he can he pick it starting to play a little bit better yeah i don't i know you're not the biggest picket believer but i don't know man he, he, he's starting to look like he can slice it dice it a little bit we'll and see i think i think the steelers are going to win this game i do and we're playing in Atlanta. This is going to be a friendly matchup for fantasy players. I expect there to be a ton of points. And what's crazy is, is right now, over the past two weeks, running backs against the Falcons defense have been averaging 26.5 fantasy points per game. 26.5 fantasy points per game. I mean, we saw Devontae Foreman go off against the Falcons. And who did the Falcons play last week? I barely paid attention because Kyle Pitts wasn't playing. <laughs> who did the who did the Falcons play last week? I'm trying to pull it out. They played the Washington Commanders. We just saw what Brian Robinson did to them. So I think Jalen Warren in a bell cow role 
could have a really good week. So if he's out there, which he might be, he might just be chilling on the waivers in a league you're in. Not if you're playing with me, because I've swooped him up in pretty much every league. Go pick him up. There is a pretty good chance he sees 18 to 25 touches against a Charmin soft front set. Would be absolutely huge if he does. I'm in a a pressure spot where I'm forced to start him, so I sure hope he does. (laughs) It'd be be a lot cooler if he did. (laughs) It'd be a lot cooler if he did, Jalen Warren. Jalen Jalen might not have that good game. He might split carries with Anthony McFarland. It'd be a lot cooler if you did get all those carries. So yeah, Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm excited to see Warren play this week. There are a couple guys at the running back position that were a little nervous, though. And you're one that you're nervous about. It's one I kind of disagree with, and we don't disagree much. So tell me a little bit more about the guy you're nervous about playing this week. Yeah, so I think I'm a little nervous about starting Pacheco this week. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, right? Isaiah Pacheco, yes. Because there's, and- there's several Pachecos. There's multiple. <laughs> Brandon Pacheco, it I is- don't know. I'm just making shit up. It's it's not a knock on him. Like I actually think he's been pretty impressive as like their lead running back in Kansas City since he's kind of gotten all of the workload. It's just a situation thing this week with how the game script is. I mean, highest point total, you know, looks pretty appealing on paper. But when you look at it, Kansas City is number one in neutral pass rate. And number two is Cincinnati in neutral pass rate. You know, we're going to have fireworks with Joe Burrow and Pat Mahomes going back and forth in the pass game together. I think it's going to be a lot of stuff through the air. And Cincinnati's defense has kind of shored up a little bit, you know, especially against running backs. I mean, minus Derrick Henry's almost house call through a screen that kind of held Derrick Henry to a pretty reasonable game last week. And Isaiah Pacheco is not Derrick Henry. And in a game where there's going to be a ton of passing going on, Isaiah Pacheco is not your pass catching back. They've got a running back dedicated to pass catching strictly in Jarek McKinnon. I mean, he's not practicing, though. This is my thought process here, Sean. And he's you not know. practicing, but they did just sign Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Right. what? But how That's much also, run is Melvin Gordon going to get? I don't know, but the, the, the point I'm they trying to get is... Wojo out there, but like, what if Jarrett McKinnon can't go and Isaiah Pacheco gets 85% of the carries? That's if my 85% of the this, carries, if 85% of the carries still turns into, you know, 12 points, are you super stoked? I mean, what if he gets 112 yards on the ground but doesn't have a single catch and doesn't have... A touchdown, you know, like that's great in real football, but in fantasy, that's what makes me nervous about this matchup. I just haven't seen anything from him as a pass catcher that makes me excited about that upside of his. Like he could have a hundred yards on the ground and still only have 10 fantasy points, you know? He got in the end zone last week. He got in the end zone last week and he got a ton of goal line love. He got a ton, but he wasn't awesome in that situation. You and I were watching red zone last week and he, it took him forever to get in yeah, it so yeah. It did. I mean, it, and that was not even like a good game all around from Kansas City. I'd expect them to be a little bit on their A game, but I don't know. He did not look we watched that game together on the couch. He was I mean he looked good in between the in there. He looked he looked good between the twenties, which is where he's looked good all all season. So I I understand you being like, Hey, I don't love what I've seen so far from Pacheco in terms of goal line situation and pass catching. Yeah. But McKinnon might not play, and if that happens, it's going to be really hard to keep like Pacheco outside of your top twenty-four. In my opinion, he's going to be. It's also going to be really hard to to predict what they freaking do at running back. I mean, this is why did they sign Melvin Gordon? Like, what was the point of that? It's a smart trade. McKinnon's hurt now, and they're playing Ronald Jones, dude. This team is trying to win the Super Bowl. They don't. They don't really want to play Ronald Jones, so I I understand where they're at (laughs) with that, and I I get it. I, I understand why you're a little apprehensive. A running back, I'm a little apprehensive about. And it leads into a receiver that I'm really excited about, actually. I'm really excited about this Eagles offense. And I'm really excited about watching A.J. Brown against mm-hmm. the Tennessee Titans secondary that has not been very good. But I'm a little nervous about chasing a all-time Miles Sanders game. You know, Miles Sanders had over 30 PPR fantasy points. They get like 150-plus rushing yards, multiple rushing touchdowns, went off against a Swiss cheese Green Bay Packers rushing defense. Hey, but don't it's draft him bit... though. Don't draft him though. Like don't draft said. him. Don't yeah. listen to players. J.K. Dobbins said he was going to play week one. <laughs> Miles Sanders said don't draft him. So, uh, what I've learned is draft running backs that have their fifth year options declined, um, or, or they're trying to get paid, aka Josh Jacobs, and then just don't listen to what running backs tell you or players tell you because they there's just 
they're just as they're just making it up like we are. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, they're just human beings. Back to Miles Sanders. Tennessee has been really good against running backs this season. They are one of the best rush defenses in terms of DVOA in the NFL. They've been super stingy to running backs for fantasy purposes. Guys have gone off in the passing game. They've kind of created like a quasi, you know, pass funnel. It's like, you're not going to be able to run it on us. You can throw it on us. but We're going to muck it up, and that's going to be the games we play in. Mm -hmm. I think this creates a situation where Jalen Hurts, you know, maybe he has a successful day running the rock, but it could be tough sledding with Jeffrey Simmons in the middle, plugging things up for the Titans and for Miles Sanders. And then I just think this is a game where, like, Nick Sirianni and the Eagles – they're very cognizant of their players and what their players want. And the players want A.J. Brown to go off against the Titans. So it's more of like I'm betting on A.J. Brown. He's the guy I'm most excited to see play wide receiver this week. Somebody that I'm just hoping goes off. It's been a little hit or miss for like three weeks now from A.J. Brown. So we're kind of mm-hmm. due for that spike week. And when he spikes, I just feel like it's going to be tough for Miles Sanders to go off too. So again, I, I would rather play Isaiah Pacheco. I'd rather play Isaiah Pacheco this week than Miles Sanders, which I know is kind of a hot take, but that's where I'm at. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And yeah, I know Pacheco, like the role, like is very sure and all that. But I don't know. I'm just something in my gut tells me, Sean, something in my gut tells me it's not the week. It was that Chipotle you ate, huh? <laughs> it's, it's that. That's what's in your gut. Huh? Yeah, it's the same Chipotle AJ Brown had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who, who are you excited to see uh, play wide receiver this weekend? I'm going with the homer pick. I'm excited to see what Garrett Wilson does this week, Sean. This is a good matchup, dude. That's a very soft excited. Secondary. Yes, the secondary for the Vikings is is so bad. I mean, right now they're allowing the fifth most points to the position at wide receiver in fantasy, and in the past month that jumps all the way up to the second. And Garrett Wilson with Michael, anybody. So Garrett Wilson, with anybody not named Zach Wilson, averages like 19.4 points a game at fantasy. And with Zach Wilson, he's never even hit 19 <laughs> points once. With, it's everyone. It's the con- yeah. Remember we did the Conklin one? <laughs> oh, man, that offense was Zach, man. I wow. mean, wow. It would be, it'd be such a bummer if you took him second overall, especially if you had another QB bust right before him. That would have been such a bummer. Oh, that happen. Man, such a bummer, right? Like, oh, It would be almost as bad as your uh, r- rookie quarterback who sat the whole previous year snapping his ankle in the second game. It would be it's almost up there. Be on par with that. It would it's be almost up there. Be on par with that one. It would be almost on par with that one. But the best part about this is, is Zach Wilson will probably be in street clothes again. Or if he's not, it'll be somewhere third string, which is the be best part like about Hayden, this. He's going to be looking like Aiden yeah. Christensen. He's going to be looking yeah. like evil Anakin. <laughs> he needs to study the playbook. He's getting ready for the uh, BYU quarterbacks coaching job when he's done in oh, New York. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, and Mike White is like, Mike White's not the best quarterback in the world. He's, he's average, right? But the offense is so favorable to the wide receivers. You just need a quarterback who sits in the pocket, makes the reads, and throws the ball. And Mike White does exactly that. I mean, Mike White is probably a backup in anybody else's team in the NFL, as he should be. And he's going to go out there, and he's going to feast against this Viking secondary, which is very, very soft. And Garrett Wilson is that dude. We've already seen it on multiple occasions. He is as talented as anybody else in that rookie class of wide receivers. And he's going to go off again this week. I'm super excited to see what he does. And, you know, side note, I'm excited to see Elijah Moore again this week. I know, like, he only had two targets, but he turned one of those into a touchdown. And, like, that's what Elijah Moore is good at. Like, his ability after he catches the ball is incredible. I'm just excited for the pass catchers in New York all around, but primarily Garrett Wilson. I'm with it. I, I'm this the receiver matchup versus the secondaries. Oh, it's going to be so fun! It's, like it is setting up for a massive Mike White game. Like it was hard not to put Mike White as the guy that I was excited to watch play quarterback this week. Yeah, like all the other bells are going off. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't do it for Mike White. Um, a, a quarterback I'm super excited to to watch is actually Justin Herbert. So I, I'm just, I think Herbert's starting to figure it out. I think his ribs are starting to feel a lot better, which is super big. Like I just, it's important for him to get healthy. He, he, he was saying, uh, up. he was saying, he I guess laugh. in an interview, well, like when he would throw sometimes, or if he laughed, he could feel his rib move. I'm like, that's not good at all. dude. Ultimate tough guy. What a tough guy. Warrior. But Keenan Allen's back. And I think it's uh, it's hard to underestimate the impact of Keenan Allen back in this offense. He's a guy that he can go to third and eight, whatever the distance, going to be able to get a first down. 
Mike Williams is day to day. I don't. I'm not. He's not going to play again this week. On Mike Williams playing, but no. Nope. Joshua Palmer is a much better option when he's the second or third option. And we talked about it a little bit on our Tuesday episode. I'm a big DeAndre Carter fan. I think he's really good. I think he's a good player. And then Austin Eckler. I mean, obviously, what man? He's the yeah. So I think that in a matchup against the Raiders, where Herbert has torched the Raiders in his career, I think this is a super fun matchup for Herbert to come off of his you know previous top five QB p- performance last week against the Cardinals. I think he continues that momentum. I think Herbert's like a top five play and somebody I'm really excited to watch. I so agree. I, I think I've got his I think tight end somebody is, I'm excited to watch this year too or this week too. You're, you're you're excited to watch Gerald Everett. He's been a little yeah. bit the past couple of weeks. What, yep. what what excites you about this one? I mean, like all the things you just said about the Chargers, kind of you know, with Keenan back, it demands more respect from the defense because you got to pay attention to Keenan. And like some of these guys flourish when they're not primary options. And Herbert is catching a little bit of a stride right now and looks pretty hot. But Raiders have been pretty soft against the tight end position this year. You know, they're allowing like thirteen point nine. What is it? Points per game to tight ends, six most in the NFL. And Gerald Everett has been spotty, but when he's been good, he's been really, really good. I'm excited just for all the pass catchers in this, but you know, from the tight end position, I like, I like Everett. I've got, I've got Herbie in my perfect lineup this week too. So I think I'm all aboard the Herbie fully loaded train. Yeah, and what's interesting too is another player I'm super excited to watch in this game is Foster Moreau, who oh, is yeah. uh, who, who is the backup tight end who's probably going to be the starting tight end moving forward. I don't. I don't think Darren Waller is going to rejoin the team. I don't. I don't know. I'm no. I'm not predicting anything. But the Raiders have consistently called out veteran players for not wanting to be a part of the team. And I think it's just a singular it player <laughs> at this point. Kind of context seems like they're talking about Darren Waller. That that if I if I'm reading in anything, he is one of the only players on the team that reaggravated a soft tissue injury and then went on IR. So I don't. I, I don't know. What I do know though is that though the Chargers have had a really tough matchup, have have had a tough season against really difficult tight ends, they have been pretty fantasy-friendly. So they've gotten torched by Kelsey. They've gotten torched by Waller. Um, You know, they've struggled against, like, the tandem that the Texans threw out there. You know, they gave up a bunch of yards to the Seahawks tight ends. They gave up a bunch of yards to the Broncos tight ends. Yeah, they are giving up the third most yards to tight ends in the NFL this season. Foster Moreau is on the field for 98% of the snaps. He is always on the field. He has a 16% target share. This game has an implied mm-hmm. 3.5 total. I just don't see a world where like Foster Moreau doesn't score like 8 to 10 fantasy points. Maybe even catches a touchdown and it's like a 14-point day. I would not be shocked. I, I think this is a fun, like, neither of these tight ends are elite game, but both of these tight ends could play well game with the Chargers and, and the Raiders. I think both right. offenses in this game have an opportunity to, like, put out some healthy fantasy days. You know, obviously Jacobs, obviously Devontae Adams, like Foster Monroe could be great in this game. Everybody listed from the Chargers side of it. I mean, it should be a fun matchup. Underrated fun yeah. matchup this week. You know who I don't think has a good fantasy day? Who? Adam Thielen. I know we 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 touched on that matchup a little bit earlier. I think strength on strength, which is Sauce Gardner versus Justin Jefferson, is very obvious. But a lot of people don't know a lot about DJ Reed, who is basically he just doesn't the, get the same coverage because he doesn't have a cool name. But he's been just name as good as yeah, yeah. It's not Sauce, but he's been just as good as Sauce, if not you know better. I mean, he's somebody who won't make the Pro Bowl from the Jets that probably should. You know, I mean, this guy has just quietly been just as good as Sauce, if not better in some situations. He's he's been electric. He's had a great career. He was a former 49er, played for the Seahawks. He's really built himself up, really developed into a hell of a corner. Probably the second best corner. Like, he's the best number two corner in the NFL right now. Yeah, Like, what you say on a team? Yeah. It's ironic as Adam Thielen was always the best number two wide receiver on a team for a while. Not so, this weekend, Sean. No, Thielen got in the end zone last week. It's been kind of tough sledding for Thielen this season. He's been fine. Like, you're playing him in the flex. He's your wide receiver four or whatever. It's been bankable production. He had a strong week against the Cowboys. I just don't see that happening against the Jets. I think it was just it's an good. outlier matchup, but yeah. I mean, I think the I think the Jets are a sneaky play at defense this week. I know it's like a star. I will be Vikings starting them. offense. I know it's a star set of Vikings offense. We don't know about the status of Christian Darrisaw. They're really 
excellent tackle who's played very well this season. I don't. Are we getting Darisaw back? I don't think so. Probably no. Oh, I think I saw something on Twitter today about that actually from the Jets beat. Is this at MetLife? (laughs) I don't think the Memphis is in Minnesota. Oh, thank God! Justin Jefferson's knee is going to be okay. Dude, MetLife is the worst. Yeah, this um, is in Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota is a different team at home. They're quite good when they play at home. So I don't. I mean, they did get blown out by the Cowboys in that game, but this is interesting. I, I this is strength on strength. I think it's bankable that Justin Jefferson can have a good game. I'm just a little skeptical about Adam Thielen. Yeah, he didn't practice. Uh, Chris Udarisaw again not practicing today. This is earlier this morning. Yeah, that would be okay. massive. Do you know who is practicing? Who? Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is practicing. Tell us a little bit more about uh, about Trevor Lawrence this I'm week. Not, I'm yeah for for the QB position. This is definitely a quarterback I'm excited to watch this week. And you know for fantasy and just because Trevor Lawrence has had an up and down start to his you know career. Obviously he had the wasted Urban Meyer year, but I think we're starting to see you know what makes Trevor Lawrence that number one pick, like consensus number one. He's always had all the arm talent in the world and all the things that you'd want out of a number one option, but he's putting it all together on the field and it's matching production as well, too. I mean, that that game he had towards, you know, or last week towards the end of the fourth quarter, he was like looking impressive. The throws he's making, I'm I'm pretty all in on Lawrence this week from a fantasy perspective. It's somebody I want to be watching for sure. Also, it's he- the Lions. They just they're, like they, they're not a good defense. They're, they're not, not a good a defense. Good defense. It, they're allowing the most fancy points to QBs, you know, this year. It should be a guaranteed, you know, QB one finish for Trevor Lawrence with the way he's been playing lately. I've got a question for you, and it's something I've been grappling with this week. Would you play Trevor Lawrence against the Lions coming off of the best game of his career? Or would you play Dak Prescott against the Colts at home Sunday night football? Dak's at home. Sunday night. Mm. You know, I like to measure things usually with the rest of my lineup, like how safe is my lineup? Am I winning other positional matchups? But I love Lawrence this week. I I think I would ride Lawrence more for the fun and excitement of it. I think you probably know what you're going to get with Dak, and it's maybe 23 points. 20 points. Yeah, 20 to 23 points out of Dak. They're they're, they're 10 and a half point favorites in a game with 43 and a half points. Total, where the the Lions and Jags, the Jags are one point favorites in a game with a fifty one and a half total. Um, I'd have to go Lawrence. I think it would be way more fun. I think so too, way I think more Lawrence fun. Is more fun. And fantasy is supposed to be fun. Don't forget, Sean. Yeah, I think fantasy is fun, and I think I'm going to go with Lawrence this week. This is somebody that I was super high on at the beginning of the season. Justin Fields has been banged up. I think Fields is going to play this week. I'm not quite sure, but I think Lawrence is a guy that's out on waivers right now. I don't know if he's going to go full 38 burger Justin Fields, but if he does like a Justin Herbert imitation for the next month, I wouldn't be shocked like at all. Yeah, I could see it happen. I mean, he's got all the tools. He's got the talent and the emergence of Zay Jones gives him not just Christian Kirk, <laughs> but Zay Jones Zay. too. Dude, Zay, he's, baby. He's been so all Zay. good. Yeah. All Zay. All baby. Zay. <laughs> remember, all, remember Zay Jones at the beginning of his career was known for the levitating. Remember when he had the thing where he got up like off his calves? Have you ever seen that video? Oh, I know. When he was about. on the yeah, Bills. Because yeah. Zay Jones was on the Bills. I remember drafting Zay Jones late round like four or five years ago. Trying to believe the hype. Then he was on the Raiders and played well. And now he's on the Jaguars. But if you haven't seen it, there's a video of like Zay Jones like levitating off the ground. It's kind of insane. I'll, I'll retweet it. I'll try it. Yeah, we'll have to go bring that back to the short Twitter. A, a guy I'm not really excited to watch this week is uh, is Deshaun Watson. I <laughs> For obvious reasons, right? <laughs> I just don't really... I'm t- It's tough because one of my fantasy team names that won back-to-back ships was Deshaun of the Dead. That was the name of my team. Deshaun Dude, was yikes. my fantasy quarterback. I, I have won... Four fantasy titles, but Deshaun is my quarterback. He's been one of my favorite fantasy players to root for. And, you know, learning that he's a, a monster is, was, was kind of a bummer, to, to be quite frank. 
But now I'm in this situation where it's like, I want nothing to do with Watson, but I know how good he is for fantasy purposes. And I know people are, are just going to forget. Like he's going to score three touchdowns in a game and people are, are just not going to care because he won them their matchup. And it's just going to turn into that. And it's just announcers being like, whoa, look at the throw Watson did. And then, you know, a year later, oh. it's just he's just a quarterback again, right? And you, you just kind of, and you're just, you, you're just kind of numb to it. And I just don't think he's going to be that good in this one. You know, and maybe it's wish casting. Maybe I'm just hoping he's not good because I don't have him on any teams and I don't want him to play well. But a lot of people just thinking he's like a top 10 QB play this week. I don't know. I mean, it's a good matchup against the Texans. You can't deny that. But, you know, he hasn't played in like 700 days. He looked terrible in the preseason. We just saw a video of all his receivers just dropping the balls. He's um, got all the massage oil on his hands. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Twitter stays undefeated. Can't app, can't believe that app is free. Um, I don't know, man. I just I could totally see him coming out and sucking. Like I just could. It could just be like fans booing, and this is their Super Bowl. Like very similar, Dude, to like Russell Wilson he's in Seattle. Have... But like, who gives? Like, who gives a fuck about the Texans? Like Texans fans? Like they, this team's giving up. I just I don't. I just want nothing to do with this. I'm just not that excited to watch him play. I don't know if he's a Sid. I don't. I don't know. I just. I'm. I'm not that pumped about it. Yeah, so I think he's gonna have like ten of his accusers in a box watching the game. <laughs> I saw I, that today. I wonder I, if that gets in his head. I wonder if that. How, I, how does that affect your uh, your your model, your fantasy model? I don't know. He's just what, a what, monster where do you of a put person. That in the model. I just. It's such a bummer. And he's going to win somebody their parlay, and he's going to be good in fantasy, and then people are just going to stop caring. Ugh, it's just disgusting. It's tough. We, you know, we're, we're trying to help people win championships, right? We're, you know, we're, we're trying to see our friends succeed. That's all that matters to us. I don't know. I ran a Twitter poll that got like 200 people responding where I said, if, would you play Deshaun Watson if it meant you know, he wins you, helps win you a title? Literally, like ninety five percent of people said yes. <laughs> it was yeah. like not even a, not even a question. So I just, yeah, maybe people just don't give a fuck. They want to win. So I get it. Like you play to win, but I'm not excited to watch Watson. I just not. I'm not either. Um, on a lighter note, or, and I'm just like, I just don't know if he's. I don't know if he's going to be good. That's my whole thing. Like this is what I'm going to leave this out here. Is I'm not saying he's going to be great. I'm not saying he's going to be bad. I just think we should pump the brakes on anyone thinking that he's going to be an incredible play at quarterback. We, we're literally watching Russell Wilson turn into a puddle, right? Like somebody we thought was going to be fantastic this season. So I think it's important for us to just kind of like set expectations. This guy hasn't played in 700 days, and he's playing against his former team where fans should hate his guts. Yep. Not, not a great matchup, in my opinion. On a lighter note. Uh, Divorce. Um... <laughs> yes, let, let's talk about divorce, Sean. Um, and jujitsu instructors. Uh, <laughs> speaking of divorce and um, losing all of your money to a crypto pyramid scheme, I'm definitely not stoked to watch Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady is somebody I am not excited to start in terms of fantasy purposes uh, this week. But Brady's just been kind of whatever this year. I mean, I can't blame him. I'm not going to get mad at him because he's 45, you know, and the Buccaneers have been banged up all year on the offensive line. Like, I don't know. There's not much to say other than, like, it is what it is. Like, I just don't think people should be rolling Tom Brady out in week 13 of their fantasy season, like, if they're vying for playoffs or want to sure up a first yeah, round by. Saints, too. Like, go play Trevor Saints. Lawrence. Like, yeah, go exactly. play Trevor Lawrence over, over Tom Brady. Come on. I mean, he just hasn't been the Tom of old, and New Orleans has had his number a bit. Uh, yeah. Since he went to the Buccaneers. So, I mean, he's only thrown for multiple TDs against them twice since he got to the Bucs. Um, in six, in like what, seven matchups? Yeah. And no, this is your. It's three. in six games. So, so, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Or five regular okay. season starts. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Five so regular two season for starts. Five, but he's, throwing, he's had some clunkers. He's yeah. had some clunkers against them. That's a matchup I'm not really excited about in general, except to watch our, our King Rashad White and see what he does with uh, maybe Lenny involved. But Lenny's back. Lenny's back. But, you know. I'm still playing White. I'm still playing him. 
if Tom Brady doesn't get the fucking ball to Mike Evans, I'm going to riot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's got to get the rock to my sweet prince, Chris Godwin. That's what it all comes uh, down to. Like, I, yes, I don't like Tom Brady very much, but also, yes, I don't like Tom Brady because in the, like the fifth straight year of drafting Mike Evans, he's really hurting me in the back half of this year when I really need him. Oh, crime your river. The one year <laughs> that Mike Evans has given you our time. <laughs> I've, Mike Evans has been doing it for nine years. It's, I know. <laughs> when two Mike Evans stands fight each other. <laughs> 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 these 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 women have an admit off. Um, okay, I, yeah, I, I get the Brady hate. Um, before we go to perfect lineups, yeah, defenses that you like this week. I, defense, I think the Cowboys against the the planted tree that is Matt Ryan. <laughs> it's gonna be a rough one. I think that's gonna well, I think fall in and I kick it up. Yeah, man's gonna need life alert for sure. That man is slow. It is a slow human being at quarterback, and uh, Micah Parsons plays on the other team. He might be the best um, defensive I, player I, in the uh, NFL. Yeah, outside of Nick Bosa. <laughs> okay. Outside of Nicholas. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, speaking of them, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, speaking of the Niners, I'm actually, I think I'm out on them as a defense this week. It's a tough matchup. It is a tough matchup for them. Nothing against them. I mean, that game should be incredible. Everything but... against them, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Okay. No. that's going to be a shootout. That's going to be a shootout. I'd be surprised if it's not a shootout. And I mean, the only thing is that um, who is it that's her? Uh, the big name Armstead. that's her, Armstead. Yeah, Tar- Tar- Armstead. But he's been hurt, and Tua gets rid of the ball in a second. So anyway. quick. That's like, the Tua thing. It's like they're so that. efficient, and he's getting the ball out faster than anybody in the NFL right now. Like not taking on sacks. It's Drew Brees. Not turning it's the ball over. Like Drew, it's Drew Brees. It's, 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 it's like Drew Brees. It's Drew Brees. <laughs> yeah, we get it. We get it. It's, it's like he's a lefty Drew Brees. Yeah, uh, but um, <laughs> outside of that, um, love the Hawks I this week. Beer. Need another beard. Yeah, I, I do like the Hawks, too. I mean, no Stafford, no Cub, no Allen Robinson. Rams take a lot of sta- uh, sacks. Like, it, it's, you the don't Rams like, have given up. You don't like Kieran, you don't like Kieran Williams and Bryce Perkins? And, uh, I'll be Jefferson? starting Kieran yeah. Williams for the third week in a row, Sean. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed are the sick. <laughs> Jalen Warren and Kyron Williams leading me to victory this week. But oh, no, that's, that, that's rich. You're going to take down somebody who's starting like Alvin Kamara and Alvin <laughs> Yeah, my opponent is playing. Uh, <laughs> the opponent is like Saquon Barkley, and you're going to take him down. Yeah, I'm, I'm leading the way with Kieran Williams and Jalen Warren against Austin Eckler and Jonathan Taylor, so that should, <laughs> that should go well for me. Jeez. But you probably got like four wide receiver ones you're playing this week. Yeah, that's all fine. I'll be good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I don't know. I, th- I think that wraps it up. Sean, should we talk about our perfect lineup predictions? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's show everybody how bad we are at that before we get out of here. Um, okay, my perfect lineup this week. I got Jalen Hurts at QB one. You know, I've stated why. I think AJ Brown's going to go off. I think Miles Sanders is going to have a tough time. I think that the Eagles are going to win this game, and I think Jalen Hurts is going to be great in this one. Nick Chubb, RB1. Anyone that's followed this podcast, especially our Thursday episode for the past four or five weeks, you start running backs against the Texans front, against the Texans rush defense. They are so bad. Nick Chubb is so good. Smash spot. Austin Eckler against the Las Vegas Raiders. I feel really good about that one. A wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, King State Kings, our sweet prince. Christian Kirk, I think Christian Kirk has a massive game against a terrible Lions secondary. I've got Josh Jacobs here at my flex, A.J. Brown in my second flex. I've got George Kittle at tight end, Cowboys defense, and Evan McPherson. I'm just going to take a kicker with a big leg in a game that's going to have a ton of points. Who's your perfect lineup this week? Okay, so my perfect lineup is starting at QB, Justin Herbert. You know, for the things we outlined, ton of points on the board in that game. Herbie is hot. I like his opportunity to finish this QB1 this week. Um, I RB, RB1, I'm going with Nick Chubb as well. I mean, for everything we just said about Deshaun and, like, not playing in a really long time, this is still, like, a huge mismatch lean in on run Chubb. game. Yeah, yeah, you lean on lean your on run Chubb. game. You lean, don't on, lean on Chubb and you can win. Deshaun's not going to go out there and throw 35 passes in his first game back in 700 days. Like, 
it's going to be a huge Nick Chubb game. Um, RB2, Aaron Jones. Now, Chicago is bad. I mean, they are... It's a plus-plus matchup. This is a good matchup. They are Aaron tanking. I, I love Aaron Jones this week, um, and especially if it's Jordan Love. Especially if it's Jordan Love. I'm all in on Aaron Jones. Uh, my wide receiver one, also Amon Ross St. Brown. I, I love that matchup. Points on the board. It should be a fun one for him. Um, Jamar Chase is my wide receiver two. First week back from injury. Shootout against Kansas City. Joe Burrow going back to his guy. Jamar Chase makes the perfect lineup and brings all of his managers back to the win column this week. I need, How I does need, that sound? I need, <laughs> I need, I need, I need him. <laughs> I need him. At my first flex option, I also have Christian Kirk in here. Same reasons you said. I like Trevor this week. I like the matchup. This should smash. be a fun one. Christian yes. Kirk's a smash, dude. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting Lawrence in my lineup right now. It is happening. It is. It, uh, I'm doing it. Fuck Dak Prescott. Sorry, Dak. You've been great, but I'm getting Lawrence <laughs> in my lineup right man. I love that uh, for my next flex. I actually have Saquon Barkley going this against week. this Commanders front seven. Yes, 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 yes. I think what the Commanders do you know are frauds. That we don't. What do you know that we don't? Because Jonathan Allen is not a fraud. He's not a fraud. Just wait. Just He's... wait. It's a big Saquon week. I'm calling it here. Um, tight end one, Mark Andrews. Um, I think Kelsey's probably the obvious answer here, but Mark Andrews has got to be kicking himself after he volleyball set spiked that touchdown last week. So Mark Andrews is a fraud. This is Mark <laughs> Andrews is back to being a fraud. He became baby Kelsey. I, okay, he, what's next? He's back. Uh, defense Seahawks. Um, yeah, kicker Justin Tucker. You know, Denver's kind of a stout defense, so. Lamar's having a little trouble getting it in the end zone. Oh, right. okay. That's your reasoning for taking Justin Tucker. All right. Okay. <laughs> My perfect lineup this week is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback, uh, Travis Kelsey. And, uh, I've got Justin Tucker and kicker. Yeah, okay, bro. Okay. <laughs> you don't got to give me a fucking reason. Like, <laughs> Justin Tucker. Just saying, dude. It lines up good. Oh. It lines up good. Yeah, it really lines up good. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Keegan, this was a fun one. I, I think I like this format better. It was a little uh, bit better. I think I like I'm in this. on this one. Yeah, I think it's a, little, it's a little more conversational. Everybody, if you haven't followed us yet, RTM Fantasy at Twitter, the account is growing. We are dropping memes. We are dropping threads. We are dropping stats. This is all free. This is all going to help you win leagues. Follow our advice. We've never been wrong, like ever. You never. can go listen to all of our podcasts. It's never happened. And uh, anything else you want to pub for the pod, Keegan? Anything else? If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure to leave us a review. You can leave us a four to five star, anything less. Uh, please don't leave one. Um, tell me if my mic sounds good. And like Sean said, go go follow the Twitter. It's a good time. We're having a good old time yeah. on there. This is going to make its way on YouTube, I think. So um, huge. Subscribe. subscribe. Like, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on that fucking bell. Woo! Oh my god, my video just <laughs> I just turned into whoa, I did I was in another dimension. I'm sorry, people. But yeah, turn on turn on all that. I don't know. We're gonna have to read a script to learn how to, to do all that. But oh it's easy. Like, you, comment, everybody. subscribe, regression to the mean YouTube channel, and make sure you turn that fucking bell on. RTM fantasy. We are two weeks away from the fantasy playoffs. Someone that's listening, you should be going to the playoffs. If you're not listening and you're just hanging out with us, you're the best. We appreciate you. Thanks, we Thanks appreciate for listening. You. We appreciate you. All right, everybody. We will uh, talk to you soon.